All right, work from home day, our only one of the semester. Are we doing this on this solar eclipse Monday? I'm going to try to record a few videos for you so you know how to continue on our poster assignment. And you can see these videos on our YouTube page. So our YouTube page for our morning class, this is for the Adobe class. You can always go to NLC Arts Lab. You can always go to Playlist. It's also linked in, in our Canvas course. And you are going to look for this morning class, Adobe Assignment 6, right, under Playlists. And you'll see what we've done so far. I recorded one short video the end of last class when I had you in person. And we're going to continue that right now. So in that video, I just gave you a quick introduction to it. It's worth doing that again. You can go under Unit Modules, and you'll find it under Unit 12. This is Type Design and Poster Layout. And the three things we're going to be needing to submit for this project to meet all of the deliverables, learning objectives, is a black type design, a color type design, and a finished poster which uses that type design with our spot illustration on a background that we choose. All right, black and white color with our spot illustration on a background to make a poster design. Uh, what I showed you in the last video is an optional step which is a type blocking sketch. And that's just before you start trying to modify and create type, Really just understanding the space you want the type to take up around your illustration. Is it above and below? Is it below? Is it to the side? Is it overlapping? Is it more complex, like side on both sides, like a column? Circular, all these kinds of things. So, I started a sketch blocking sketch, or a type blocking sketch. And the first thing to do is to go to your assignment five. And you pick kind of your, your best assignment five so far. My best assignment five so far is this version. And it has a little bit of texture to it. It's my spot illustration colored. It has some subtle color holds to it that I like. But I also might like this version, which is just, just the duotone hard edge. And it really doesn't matter which one you choose, because you don't have to choose till the end. But you need to know the shape of the spot illustration you're going to use. Then what you're going to do is you're going to open that up. So just quickly, I'm going to take my preferred spot illustration at this moment. I'm going to select it all in preview, copy it, and as I've been doing in this class, when I finish an assignment, I mark it green, take the yellow away, and then I go to get info for the folder, and I swap the folder icon image with the finished assignment image. There we go. So these are all the assignments and exercises we've done so far. Now, I start a folder for assignment six. And I'm going to be showing this all with freeware. So though we have been using Adobe Photoshop in the past, if I double click on my lab computer, it will open up in Photoshop like we're used to. You might not have access to Photoshop from home. So what you can do is use freeware, browser-based freeware, and use those same PSD files, save as a PSD file. But before I go too far, one of the first things you want to post on this work day into assignment six is your text blocking sketch. It's a nice way to acknowledge the assignment, the deadline. So I'm just going to put a JPEG in of it. So what does text blocking do? Well, it takes the proportions of 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch that we're using for our posters 
it puts your spot illustration on that rectangular format in some way. And then it decides in a loose sketchy way what shapes would work best for the type. So you have to decide on what your type is and I'm going to play with this idea of, of TikTok with knick knock and I might actually use K's instead of C's. I haven't decided yet. Right, because Nico is the name of our night, Nighthawk. And uh, yeah, I thought it kind of worked. Anyway, so it's going to be text blocking sketch on a 16 by 20 inch at 350 pixels per inch. Just so you know the proportions it's going to have. That is your composition, your layout. Now, how can you build that text blocking sketch when you are working from home? You can use Photoshop if you have it, just like I, I showed in the past video. Or you can use photop.com, which is always in, also in the links page of our Canvas site. But you can just go to photop.com. You don't need to sign in. You don't need to create an account. And I can drag in my PSD file that I already created in Photoshop, and it will have all the different layers. So I'm just going to review this quickly. First thing to do is to set up a new file that is in inches, 16 by 20 inches, at a pixels per inch resolution of 350. Next, you're going to drag and drop your spot illustration in you can position it in multiple ways. You can make duplicates, try it in different ways, but this is what I decided. If you change your mind and you want a different kind of spot illustration, so for instance, I don't want my, um, if I decide I don't want my full spectrum soft edged version with the color holds, maybe I just want my, my simpler duotone hard edge version. I can bring it in. Here's the main difference with Photo P from Photoshop. To transform, instead of just hitting Command T, because when you hit Command T in a browser, it opens up a new tab. You have to hit Option Command T. And if you're on a PC, the Option and Alt button are the same thing. So Alt Command T. And when I do that, I get the transform box, just like Free Transform in Photoshop. And I can kind of shrink it down and place it so it's roughly in the same place. So I have now two different versions, right? Okay. I don't need to decide on that yet. And I can still make alterations and changes to my spot illustration before assignment six is due. But I need something to show how much space it's going to take up. Next. I just use a basic pen tool or brush tool within this format to decide where do I want the text to be. And I can try it in a bunch of different ways and I can curve it. I'll give you an alternative text blocking example here. I'll do this in bright red or in pink. What if I wanted the text to kind of take up like a rainbow shape like that? And that's why it's called blocking, because you're not actually writing your text. You're just blocking out the shape you want it to take up. The next step is then to carve that up into the type solution that you want. So if I want Nick, and I'm just doing this with my mouse, because I realize a lot of you don't have tablets at home, and you don't need it for this phase of the project. And I just kind of divide up that text blocking into the shape I want. And I'm going to try K's out here. And you can see how flexible Latin type can be, our alphabet can be. So do I like that or do I like this more? And one thing to pay attention to is inspiration. 
So I am inspired, as I put in the assignment here, by TikTok and that branding. You know, just that really simple, what's called a modern typeface. People call them fonts in everyday life, but fonts are actually different than typefaces. These are typefaces, and we'll get into that difference. But this really kind of modern, straightforward typeface with an offset of magenta and cyan. And I'm going to play with that with the drop shadow to give it some activation. And maybe I'll even play with that on the spot illustration for the finished poster. But this is my inspiration. This is what I thought would kind of make it a little bit more playful, but maybe I'll change them into caves. So it's good to have inspiration. I just sketched it out. You can do it digitally. You can do it by hand. It's good to know what you're trying to do. And you'll have the option of making the type yourself in a vector program or modifying existing type. The next thing you'll need for your poster is some sense of border around your image. So for now, all I did was just use the gradient tool, which is with the paint bucket. And I selected a marquee rectangle shape you know, that gave me the border I wanted. And then I filled that with a gradient on a layer just to kind of hold space. You can also do this by hitting Command if you're on a Mac or Control if you're on a PC and R and get your rulers. And just like in Photoshop, you can bring your guides down to give yourself some sort of border within that 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch. Why is a border important? Well, a border is important for poster design or flyer design, ad campaign design, because professional printers cannot print all the way to the edge of paper. There always needs to be a bleed section and then a trim section. So the border helps us design that. And when we design it, we can play some nice games. So for instance, you can see that my type blocking actually goes beyond the edges of the border and that can make the type even more powerful what i don't want to have is anything that's just touching the border that's a tangency that's uncomfortable the way the in is just touching the border at the top that's something i'll fix in my final layout so these are we're learning some basic communications type design uh, and layout design with three components text spot illustration background and then our background is going to also need a border. So if you want to think of the border as a fourth element, you can, but it's just a requirement of the background. All right, so what's the next step? How can I actually turn this into vector type? Because that's the next thing required. Black shape vector type design. So I am gonna show you a way that does not use type tools within Photopea or within Photoshop, or within Adobe Illustrator, or Vector.com. Instead, I'm going to show you how we can use and be inspired by type design, but create it all ourselves in freeware vector programs. And that freeware vector program is also in links in our Canvas course, but it is vctr.com actually scratch that it is vectr.com sorry you need the e but no o so it's vector.com, V-E-C-T-R.com. And you're just going to say, use the free graphics, vector graphics editor right now. And they keep adding new tools. And this is true of a lot of browser-based freeware. I don't want any of the free benefits. I don't want to sign up for things. I am curious because they've just added this vectorizing tool, but you would need to subscribe. So we're going to use the tools uh, which at least traditionally have not required a subscription. So we're going to say open. 